Welcome back to Aliens. Let's continue with the series on Go. In this video, we'll focus on branching statement. In fact, I'm talking about if else and switch. Now, if you are coming from language like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, you know what I'm talking about, right? We have if else and we have switch. But then why do we need them? The thing is, when you say you are working on a code or if, you, if you're writing a program, which means you're trying to add logic to your code, right? So basically, you are trying to understand the flow of your application. So based on user event, based on some data, you will change the flow of your data. So basically, based on the condition, if it is true or false, you will do different things. Or maybe sometimes it's not just two, maybe they have different options. Maybe you have five options. So let's say if I ask you to greet someone, so let's say you have to say good morning, if it is morning time, you have to say good afternoon, you have to say good evening, good night. So based on the time and situation, you will greet them, right? So that's something you want to achieve here. And we can do that with the help of if else or switch. So let's start with if else and how do we use them? Now, first of all, uh, to use that, I will be simply using a variable. In fact, uh, let me just print something so that I can, I will be using that uh, FMT, otherwise it will just remove it. So I don't want to print anything, so I will just go back and here. So I want to create a simple variable and I will say num and the value for num, let's say is one. Now, based on this value of num, I want to print something else. So let's say I want to print hi if the value of num is less than five. I want to print by if the value of num is more than five. So what exactly we want to do is we want to say print and here I want to print high if the value of num is less than five and I want to print by if the value of num is, is greater than five. Uh, so we have to, we, have, we got an error. Uh, in fact, with this, let me also print the value of num so that we'll know what is happening. So now if I run this code, let me just, uh, let me just go back here and say run and you can see we got hi one and buy one okay we got in the same line because we are saying print uh, not print ln so you can see we got hi one and we got buy one but i don't want to print both i want to print only one based on the condition uh, so to achieve if you want to achieve that we have to use if now if is a way you can check for the condition if it is true then it will print the block otherwise it, it, it will go for the next block uh, so you have to specify the condition you say if num is less than so that's how you specify less than five and we have to open the bracket the curly brackets and you have to make sure that you put this statement inside if so what we're doing is we are saying if this is true then print high otherwise now how will you say otherwise in fact this will work so it will print high only when the num the value of num is less than five that doesn't mean it will not print by because by is outside if so irrespective of if if is giving you true or false a by will get printed so so what i'm saying is if i run this code you can see we got high and by both uh, because the value of num is one but what if i say the value of num is nine now in this case it will not print high because uh, the value of num is not less than five uh, but then i don't want to print by in both the conditions i want to print by only when uh, this this condition is false in that case you can say else so if is true if this is true that it will execute the if block if it is false it will go for the else block so only one of them will be executed at, at a time so you will open the curly brackets here and you will close it here so that's how you specify if and else okay there is a mistake you have to put that on the same line so go follows this uh, pattern you know so if you want to use else you have to use it with the ending curly brackets of if uh, and i think it should work now let's go back and run and you can see it works so we got we got by because the value of five is less than uh, is greater than five but if i say four and if i run this code uh, you can see we got four uh, we got high and four but what if if i say five what do you think if I make this as five, will it print high or buy? So what you have to do is you have to pause the video, comment your answer, and then we'll see. So the thing is, when you say num is less than five, which means it will only check till four, okay? Because when you say less than five, it is four. Uh, so in that case, it will print buy. So if you run this, you can see we got buy. But if you want to get, if you want to check till five, then you have to give equal to. So it is, so num should be less than or equal to five. Uh, now it should print high five. Yeah, that's great. High five. Uh, so this is working. So this is how we use if and else. 
But then what if you have multiple statements? I mean, if you have multiple conditions, so uh, something like this. So I will have the value of num as one. And if it is one, I want to print in the word format. So for one, I should print O and E. For two, I should print uh, maybe T W O. How do we do that? And to, in fact, we can do that here as well. So we can check if the value of num is equal to equal to one. Now that's how you compare, you have to use double equal to, because if you use single equal to, that becomes an assignment operator. And you can see we got an error. So it says syntax error, assignment num equal to one used as a value. Okay, that's that's right. So I want to check for the condition. So we got a condition here. And then if this is one, I'll be printing one. And if that's not the case, if it is two, then I'll be printing TWO. But how will you use uh, second condition here? Can we specify in condition in, in else as well? Yes, we can. So we can say else if, and again, we have to say num is equal to equal to two. In that case, you will, instead of printing by, uh, you will print TWO, and then I don't want to print num. So that's how you, you do else if. So in else as well, you can check for the condition using if again. But what if it is three? Then in that case, you can also write else if, and then again, else if, so you can check for multiple values. And then at the end, let's say if you're checking till five, and then the value you're inserting is six. In that case, you can do an else part. So else, if, if nothing is getting matched, I'm gonna say mistake, but write on the same line. And here I will say fmt.println, and here I'll print none, right? So it is now one, two, or none. Now, if you're on this code, of course, it will print one, and you got one, but what if you say three? Now, in this case, it is not matching with one, it's not matching two, so it will print none. If you say two, of course, it will print two. So that's how we can use uh, else if and else. Okay, now there's one more thing. What if you want to uh, check for a given number is even or odd? Now that will be assignment if you have done that before, that's great. Uh, so that will be first assignment, how to check even or odd in, in Go. The second one is I will give you four values. You have to give me the greatest of all the numbers. So you have to find the maximum value out of it. So the value is let's say five, six, two or one. So you have to give me output as six because that's the maximum value you have. Uh, so that will be assigned. But then uh, I don't want to stop here because instead of using if else, we have one more one more example here. The problem is with if else, uh, what if you have multiple checks? So we have one, two, let's say three, four. So sometimes it's easier to use something else than if else because here you are checking for the condition because I don't, I'm not doing any operation here. You can see that I'm just checking for the value. Uh, if that is the case, you can also use switch. Now how switch works, so you can come in this part because I, I don't want to use this. So if you have num, what we can do is we can use switch. Uh, so let me just show you how switch works. So you simply have to say switch num and open the brackets. Now this is your switch block. Now if you want to check for the cases, if you want to check for the condition, instead of using a, a condition, you can simply use case. The same syntax is there in C as well, C, C++, Java, C Sharp as well. Uh, yeah, it changes when it comes to uh, Kotlin, but it's the same in Go. So I will check for the case one because we have multiple cases. If it is one, I will print one and that's it. And then we have to go for case two and here we'll print two. I mean, the same thing we have done here in FLs. And then we can have multiple cases. You can have case three, case four, case five. But what if none of these cases are matching? Now in that case, you will use default. So you will give colon and here I will print. So this is something you have to remember when we work with if else, you have to use else for default one or for switch, we have to use default and we'll say none. So now this one looks almost same as if else, it's just that we are not checking for the condition. So this is much more readable. And let's see if this works. And if you run this code, you can see we got two because that's the case. It's so simple, right? So what it's doing, it is checking for the cases. So if your value is two, it will check for the case one. Is it matching with one? No. Uh, it will simply jump to case two. If it is matching, yes. It will print this two, and then it will come out of switch switch block. Okay, now there's a there's a twist. Now if you're coming from C, C++, Java, C Sharp, we know this thing, right? Whenever you work with switch, you need to use a break statement. We don't have to do that in Go, right? So because it, it says if your case is matching, that's it. You're, you're coming out of switch, uh, switch block. 
so that's your that's how you use switch in in go in fact you can use one more example which is awesome so you can just go to so you can simply go to this website which is golang.org and then they have some awesome tutorials and this is one of the examples which i liked so what i will do i will just copy this code because this code looks interesting and because we all wait for saturday uh, so today here is uh, Thursday. So what this example is? So this example simply says uh, we have we are printing when is Saturday, uh, which is which is due tomorrow here uh, because today we, when I'm recording this video this is Thursday. So of course I want I'm waiting for Saturday as well. Everyone waits for Saturday. Uh, and then so what you're doing is we want to check when is Saturday. So if Saturday is today, of course we will print it's today. If Saturday is tomorrow, we'll print uh, tomorrow. If Saturday is coming in next two days, we'll, we'll print in next two days. If by chance you're watching this video on Monday or Sunday, it's too far, right? <laughs> so, that's what we want to do here. I hope you're watch you not watching this on weekdays, like especially on Monday. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but that's, that's the risk. So how do we do that? How do we check today's date? So basically we have this time package available. Uh, so basically we are looking at different packages right we have fmt we have uh, math we have time so using this time package you can see we have a, a method or function called as now uh, so now gives you the current time uh, but then we want we don't want everything we just want the weekday so what's the day today so it's thursday so it will give you thursday so today is thursday and then we have to pass that time so we are passing saturday here and we are matching that with today's date so is it uh, today if it is today plus zero then it is today if today plus one that's tomorrow if today plus two it's in two days and default is too far uh, let's verify if this works i will just say save and go back here and run okay we got an we got an error so there's extra brackets let's run this and you can see we got uh, when is saturday it's in next two days right so you can see my look at my smile and you can guess right when you set it in. Uh, so that's how that's that's how you can use switch and that's how you can use time package. So I would I would recommend you to explore time package. In fact, you can also print. Uh, so you can also print time dot now just to understand what it prints. Uh, so you can see it, it prints the entire time. So it is uh, this is today's date. Uh, this is time. And this is the uh, this is the time zone where I'm in. So yeah, so that's that's how you can use now, and you can fetch all these values. You can fetch year, you can fetch date, uh, you can fetch time. So explore this, and that's it. That's it on this video. So I hope you are enjoying this. Let me know in the comment section, and do subscribe for further videos. Bye bye.